are now tuned in to Trust the Scoop with your host, Philip Dukes, a.k.a. Dukes the Scoop. Yo, what's going on? Welcome to episode two of Trust the Scoop. I am your host, Philip Dukes, a.k.a. Dukes the Scoop. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Dukes the Scoop and Twitter at Dukes the Scoop and Philip Dukes on Facebook, a.k.a. Dukes the Scoop. Now, so uh, episode one, we did really well, man. We did a lot more uh, views than I thought that we would. And uh, I'm just really appreciative to everybody that supported me and uh, helping this thing go up. So, And as they say in Atlanta, hey, when it's up there, it's stuck there. So we on our way. All right, so I know last time I talked about, you know, my origin and how I got uh, kind of just became an insider in Auburn and how I was around a program and how I got so much information and just the people I knew and my experience being an Auburn man. Now, during that story, I said, you know, people call me CP, right? When I said there was a funny story that came out of that. All right, so my freshman year, I get to school, uh, brand new guy there, I get the name CP, college part, whatever, so people are calling me CP. So, I mean, I had a class with a girl, uh, met a girl. She was super cool, you know, let me get her notes or whatever. And uh, she asked me what my name was, and I was like, CP. And she was like, you're CP? And I was like, yeah, that's me. And she was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. And I'm like, dang, what am I doing so fast? But, okay. Now, come to find out, her dad was a huge Auburn basketball fan. And the year prior, Chris Porter was on campus, right? So, CP was his nickname as well. So she's thinking I'm him. Now, regardless of whatever happened, she could never have watched a Auburn basketball game to think that I was CP, that she thought I was. But who cares, right? So, you know, she's bringing me notes, let me get lunch on her card a couple days, you know, brought me a couple gifts, just like, some, you know, some, 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 some nice stuff or whatever. So, and uh, she invites me to a party. And I say, sure, I'll go. So I go and uh, she's so excited. She's, oh, guys, I've got CP. CP is here. And I'm like, yeah, free drinks, whatever. And then uh, I see one of her friends tap her on the shoulder. And they go into a room. And she comes back out livid. She's mad as hell. You told me you were CP. I said, well, I am. She said, no, Chris Porter, such a such woo woo She goes off and she's like, I did, I did all this thinking that you were CP. And I, she, and I said, well, uh, <laughs> I took it all thinking that you like me. <laughs> so uh man you know that's just a uh, funny story about my freshman year in college but uh yeah man but the name cp always stuck so but yeah man everybody's here for the recruiting roundup and the practice notes and it hey, i did a lot of digging man i made a lot of phone calls in order to get you guys some info uh really excited about what we got going on so i think we'll start with recruiting and with that being said let me put these on oh yeah dukes why do you have on sunglasses in your house? Because that's how I feel about recruiting right now. After the commitment of Amari Harvey, just emoji me, man. You know the emoji with the sunglasses? That's me right now. So you got to think. Now in July, everybody was talking about our class. And, oh, we only in the top 35. Lord, what's Auburn going to do? Alabama is just going to run out right shad over us. UGA is getting whoever they want. Man, please. It's over. I said back then this had the potential to be one of our best classes ever, and I stand on that. Currently, in the 24-7 composite rankings, Auburn stands at 90.29. Last year, uh, .9029, right? Last year, we had a top seven class, and our class average was .9099, Right? Our best class was only like 91.44 or 0.9144. We are maybe not even, we probably have about the capacity to add maybe 40% more guys. We have more guys coming, trust me, and high caliber guys. The guys that we're in it for, that we're recruiting at a high level, these guys are going to be well over that 90 point or 0.9029 that we are right now. So we have the potential to have a 92 overall class, which would be the best rank or the highest ranked class that we've had in the Gus Malzahn era, even including the last year class that was top seven. So this is how I feel right now. I feel so cool, even on the inside. Inside in the house, I feel really, really good about where Auburn stands recruiting right now. So let's get into some names and some updates about what we got going on. In the case of Amarius Mims, 
A lot of people have all, I mean, just all the time, he's going to Georgia, no use in recruiting him, move on, offer somebody else. We're not operating like that. Amarius Mims really, really likes Auburn. Now, do I think that Auburn leads? Not at all. Do I think Auburn has the best shot of anybody outside of UGA? I think so. Do I think that we should stop recruiting him? No way. He's a generational talent. We haven't seen a guy 6'7", 3'10", 3'15", with that body size that can move the way he does and is just strong as hell. We, we haven't seen that. So if you had the opportunity to have a guy like that potentially even want to come to Auburn, you take every measure in the book to be sure that you've done everything that you can to exhaust all possibilities for a guy like that to come to Auburn. So even if people say, UGA leads and, and we're wasting our time. That's time well wasted. You never know. The next kid out of Blackley County could be bigger and better than him, and he could be related to him. He could be somebody that he knows. He could be somebody that he potentially coaches one day. The experience that we lay down when we recruit to Auburn is important. Prime example, Mark Anthony Richards, his brother, Amon Richards. I talked about him last week. He really seriously considered coming to Auburn. That helped us big time when it came to recruiting MAR. So I think that in the case of Amarius Mims, we sit in the best position possible, being that he's a he grew up a Georgia fan. He's a heavy Georgia lean, but Auburn is right there. Nobody, all of the smoke around Alabama, that's kind of went away. I think Tennessee is still recruiting him super hard. I think the relationship that he has with Cody Brown will play a major, fa a, a major factor. But I also believe that Auburn is doing an excellent job recruiting him, and I think that this is something that will go down to signing day, even if he commits early. And I think that Auburn is in a very, very good position. I do think that UGA leads by a wide margin, but I'm just very, very impressed at the fact of now, it's almost like the Bruce Pearl effect in basketball. When those five stars and those four stars start to roll around, roll around that we put our eyes on and that we say we want to be a part of our program, we're making ourselves a part of the, com the, a part of the conversation on a – more consistent basis. And I love it. And as you can see, our class, we're straight. We still have a 90 plus class right now, and we're not even halfway done. So, yes, I'm very, very excited about our prospects with Amarius Mills, and I think that he's a generational talent, and I think that Auburn should continue to recruit him just as hard as they've been doing. And I think that if if we get one of these five stars to go ahead and commit to Auburn, you'll see it'll be like a, the linchpin. You'll see more and more. And so I think that even though the – Offensive line that we have already worked on and that we do have committed is great. I do think that we have more room in the class. And I think that Amarius Mims is a guy that, even if we don't get him, I think that we still have to be very, very excited about the job that Jack Big Nail has done in order, to, in order to put us in the top three and the top two for a guy like that. Now, I don't think his recruitment is over by any, strike of the, any, by any, any stretch of the imagination. I think that we're that we're in it, and I think that we're going to go down to the to the to the finish line with it, and uh, I think it can come down to a photo finish. So that's how I feel about that. Let's talk about Nylon Green. So Nylon Green has, I said, he has a very complex recruitment, and I've heard from multiple sources at different schools. I, I did a lot of calling around, and um, I think that one of the most important factors with Nylon Green is going to be his sister. He has a twin sister that wants to go to school with him, and I think she's a volleyball player. Now, I'm not sure if Auburn is, has offered her a scholarship or if anybody has at this point, but I think that she will be in hit, like I think that she'll be in his back pocket when she goes to school. I think they'll go to school together, and I think that's a very important part of his recruitment as far as what's going to make their family feel most comfortable. Right now, if I had to choose, I think Georgia's in the lead. I think that Tennessee is still making a very, very strong push for him. So I would say right now, Auburn sits third, but it's a very comfortable third based on the fact that he almost committed to us. I think that he was really close to committing over the summer. Um, I think they pushed off that decision. I think that Auburn made a very, very good impact, a strong impact with the family, and I think that his recruitment is going to be one that goes down to the line. I, I definitely to the uh, to the signing day, excuse me. And I think that he's a recruit that enjoys recruiting. I think he's in, in, enjoying being recruitment, being recruited. And why wouldn't you? I mean, if I was 17, 18 years old, and I have all of these coaches that I've grown up watching, and dream schools and, you know, just all of the things that go into a, a, a high-level recruits recruitment, yeah, why wouldn't you enjoy your recruitment? So I think that's one that we shouldn't worry too much about. I think that we're doing our best, and I think that Nylon Green is more so of a family decision than it is just a 
Nylon decision. I think that a lot of times that we see kids and their recruitment goes differently based on the factors that are involved in the recruitment. So I think that uh, Nylon Green right now, if I had to say, I would say that he's probably a heavy Georgia, not heavy Georgia lean. I think that he he's leaning Georgia at the moment. I think that Tennessee will be second. I think that Auburn will be really running a really, really close third right now. All right, so let's talk Kamari Lasseter. Um, I think that Clemson has taken the lead. If I were to, in my opinion, I think that uh, AU was right there. It's almost like a 1A, 1B, 1C. But I think Clemson has made a major, major push for Kamari Lasseter. Um, I think that Auburn is still in the thick of it. I think that this still can be one of the best de defensive back classes that Auburn has seen, especially with the commitment of Mari Harvey. And just to segue into another guy that everybody's excited about, which would be uh, Jaquincy Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think that Auburn sits in the best place that we've ever sat with him. I think that uh, he did have on the Auburn tally this game when they played uh, a Marty Good with them last week. Um, I think a lot of smoke around that situation. I do think Kool-Aid will be a part of Auburn's class. I'm not sure when he will be committing. A lot of people start seem to think that it could have been this past weekend. But I don't know. He's uh, he's well guarded with his, with his information. He keeps things really, really close to the vest. But I think that I'm hearing from multiple sources, even in high school ranks, that people feel really, really good about where Auburn sits with Kool-Aid. Um, let's get into Smile Monday. I think uh, right now, if I were to say um, – UGA and Auburn are about 50-50 right now. For a long time, I've been saying that UGA was the leader, but as of now, I feel like if you flip a coin, um, it could be either one. I think that he, feel just, he feels just as good about Georgia as he does Auburn. So that's a really, really good spot. I, I've always said that I, I kind of got Owen Papo vibes from this recruitment, and I think that Smile Munden probably – if we were to get a five-star right now, I think he would probably be the most likely for us to get. Uh, let's talk wide, wide receivers. Um, Rock Taylor, man. Rock Taylor looked so good the other night um, in his first action of the season. I think he's a guy whose rating is going to skyrocket once the season plays out and all the guys who aren't playing. Uh, he's one of the guys that I really think that if he gets in the armor, he's going to be one of those guys who makes an instant impact with his size and his ability to catch the ball. He really catches the ball well at that size. I know he, how big he is. You know, some people are saying he could possibly be a tight end, but no tight end right there. That's a wide receiver, a big body wide receiver with the wide catch radius. And I think he um, was a little disappointed that he didn't get the attention from Auburn early on, uh, as much attention as he would have liked. But I do think that he wanted to come to Auburn originally, and I think that Auburn is doing everything they can to try to get that uh, decommitment and that flip to Auburn uh, away from Tennessee. Um, a name that a lot of people haven't talked about that I think Auburn is still, that's still on Auburn's radar, which is uh, Dejon Reynolds. Uh, he's a, a Florida commit. Uh, I have heard that he's 100% committed, but I also have heard that we are still making strides and trying to contact him and see if he um, – you know, we'll reconsider. I think that without the visits, it does make everything a little different. But also with that extra year of eligibility that's coming for the guys who do play this year, I think that it's going to, have, it's going to play a major part in the numbers game. So you'll see recruits start to reevaluate where they're committed to, how the numbers shake out, who's coming back. Because you got to think, a lot of guys committed in the summertime thinking that the current class would be leaving to the NFL or going or graduating. But there are going to be some seniors that get to play again based on the new rule that came out. So I think that some guys are going to reevaluate their commitments, and I think that he could be one. Another guy that a lot of people aren't talking about is Canarius Johnson, currently uh, committed to uh, Tulane. A lot of people seem to think that he would have went to Mississippi State, and he still could go to Mississippi State. I think that Auburn's doing their due diligence, and that's just another name to watch. I don't, I'm not sure how hard we're recruiting him right now, but I have heard that he is on the board, so that's somebody that you guys may want to check out. When it comes down to Scooby, uh, Jeremiah Williams, uh, Four-star, uh, close to five-star buck target out of Birmingham. Uh, Ramsey, Ramsey High. Um, I think that Auburn is the leader, in my opinion. I think a lot of people thought that he would have committed early on. There was a lot of smoke about Florida. I think that Florida really does sit in a great spot, but I think it's 1A, 1B right now, and I think that Auburn would be the A. But like I said, it's a flip of a coin, but I do think those are his top two schools and that uh, Auburn is still doing a really, really good job particularly uh, Coach Gus Malzahn as far as being on top of his recruitment and making sure that he knows that he's wanted. And I think that he's a guy that we can also see in the fold. Let's talk Armani Goodwin, currently committed. Man, so last week when I did my tweets, I said, okay, this guy Armani Goodwin, he looks very freakish. He responded well to his rehab. He's doing it. And everybody was talking about how good he looks. Well, uh, 
The survey says I was right. He looked phenomenal, phenomenal against Pinson Valley. I think he had like 170 yards, a long touchdown run. And on the touchdown run, uh, uh, we saw him running away from a few people. I'm not going to name names, but, uh, yo, Monty looks really good, man. And he looks like the type of back. He doesn't look like a scat back at all. Uh, I know a lot of people were talking about how tall he is, but I don't I don't care how tall you are. If, if you can break tackles and if you can outrun people and if you have some of that shiftiness. And he's such a such a gritty runner. Uh, so ran through so many arm tackles the other night, and I think that his strength and I think the, the, the way he attacked his rehab Really, really made a difference in the way that his body looks right now. And if you look at his tape from last year or the year prior to this year, he looks like almost a totally different person when it comes to his size. He just looks so thick and stocky to the point where it almost gives me like that Michael Dyer type build, but more defined. So uh, definitely excited about having him on the fold. I hear that we um, other schools are really, really coming after him right now. Uh, LSU was one that gave us a scare a little early on, or earlier on in the summer. But I think that uh, – Auburn is doing a really good job is treating him as, of treating him as a priority and recruiting him like he hasn't been committed. And I think that's really, really important when it comes down to keeping uh, people in the fold. Um, let's see where we want to go now. Let's talk about practice. So we had a scrimmage this past weekend. And a lot of people are trying to fight for information. Uh, Gus Malzahn gave us what he usually gives us, which is a, a kind of high-level type of deal when it comes to how did it go and what was going on. But I'm going to give you guys a few names that I heard showed out a little bit that really had looked good over the first week of practice. Uh, the first name that I got was Alec Jackson. I said Alec Jackson really, really looks like he's, could, he's going to be a major player in the rotation on the offensive line. I also heard that Brandon Council is really, really good. I uh, heard that he's a very, very confident guy. Uh, he did play smaller college ball before getting in the arm. I think he – I can't remember exactly what school he came from. I, I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, a lot of times you see guys that come from those smaller schools and, you know, they try to see if they fit or they, they may, be, may be a little more timid when they get there until they catch their bearings. They say this guy from day one came in like, hey, look, I'm the man. I'm going to play. And the SEC <clears throat> is where I should be. And they say that he's substantiating those claims right now. Uh, they say he looks really good in practice at multiple positions. And that's somebody that I heard is really doing his thing. Let me take these glasses off and play with y'all too long. Now, the running back, three-headed monster right now. Tank, M-A-R, Worm. All three have looked phenomenal from what I'm saying, what I'm hearing. Um, I think that M-A-R has been catching the ball really well out of backfield. They say his routes look really good. I also heard that Worm is really taking the offseason seriously. Uh, and and, and, I, and I, I didn't get a chance to ask, and I will this week, if there was any impact with them not having a track season, did that kind of give him any more strength conditioning when it came to him getting ready for football season? So I'll ask about that. But now I heard he looks really, really good. And, of course, Tank. Everybody's ranting and raving about Tank. Uh, we don't know if he's going to start against Kentucky. But I'm willing to bet that he will get a lot of carries and uh, he'll be a part of that uh, that uh, running back rotation. Harold Joyner also looks good from what I'm hearing. So it's nothing but good things about the running back room right now. They said the guys look very explosive. Um, I did hear that there, there are some guys who look really sluggish out there and they're just getting their bearings. So as people start to get their time, and not, not in the running back room, but other, other positions, but it's all over the field. But as people start to get their timing back and people start to get used to the wear and the grind that goes along with uh, uh, preseason camp, I think that we're going to start to see more people emerge that may not have had the best first week, but as they start to get used to what's going on, then they'll start to kind of shine and they'll start to progress and pick up some things that so, and pick up the pace. I also heard that uh, Owen Papo looks like a freak of nature. They say he's bigger, stronger, and faster, and he is laying wood. And when I say that, I mean, when he gets there, the contact, you can just hear it from what I'm hearing. So, really, really excited to hear about Owen Papo. I heard that uh, Wesley Steiner has one speed, and that's 100 miles an hour. Uh, I, think, I, I think that he's a guy that we may have to slow down a little bit as, as he starts to learn, but uh, definitely excited, and I think that he's really adamant about trying to be that fourth linebacker this year. I also heard that Big Red, Daquan Newkirk, really looks good, that he's moving around really well. He was a guy that had, had a lot of had some, uh, back-to-back injuries, uh, a running back in high school, super athletic guy, really, really strong, one of the strongest guys in the locker room, and they said that he's really uh, moving around well right now. Also, Tyrone Truesdale, and uh, a guy that I heard about 
that really looked good was Stone Handy. Uh, he's going to be a true sophomore. I think he had like seven tackles last year. But they say Jaron Stone Handy looks good. And Zachevious Walker. And one. Oh, okay. I got another note. Derek Hall has been playing both sides, the book and the strong side. And they say he looks really, really good. And I'm really excited to hear that, to see that we get some of that multiplicity that you may be able to have different fronts and different packages where you'll have a Derek Hall who usually would play the book. If you can have him in the same lineup with the TD Moultrie, or you can have two bucks on the field at the same time because you can slide one of those guys down to the strong side and maybe kick one of those guys from the strong side into the deep tackle and kind of give us that nascar s package, so to speak. So uh, definitely excited about the multiplicity and the rotations that have been going on, going on along the defensive line. Um, did, I, did I miss anything? Derek Hall, Alex Jackson. Oh, Keandre Jones. Keandre Jones is looking really good. Uh, they said Brandon Frazier had a nice catch, uh, the true freshman uh, tight end. Uh, they said he had a really nice catch. Jeremiah Pegues is really 300 pounds. <laughs> they, they say he's a big boy and he can move. They say he's a legit 300. Like, it's not even no, mm-mm. yeah, like, yeah, they say the man looked like he could be a D tackle already. So, uh, definitely uh, very excited to hear about him, knowing that you have a tight end that can move at that size. Really, really exciting. Uh, I'm just really excited about the future of Auburn football right now. I think that uh, a lot of people tend to get worried and say, oh, okay, about the recruiting things. And just know that the guys that we depended on the past few years weren't all five-star recruits. Daniel Thomas was not a five-star recruit. And I always like to bring up that example. So when Daniel Thomas came to Auburn, right? He got his offer very, very late in the game, and it may have been on. A, it may have, it may have been on signing day, but if it wasn't, it was really, really close to signing day. And that's because that Auburn was so closely tied to Nigel Warrior, who ended the the high four star, almost five star Dale Carter son, who played at uh, University of Tennessee. So when he committed to Tennessee, Auburn needed. You know, Auburn had the contingency plan was Daniel Thomas. Nigel Warrior had a mixed career at Tennessee. I think he's a hell of a player. I think he'll do well in the NFL, but. I wouldn't trade Daniel Thomas for anything in the world, and he was really, really close to not even coming to Auburn. I forgot what his other school was, but it wasn't a a big-time SEC school at all. So for us being able to make the designation that, hey, this is a guy that we think can play, he came in, he did what he had to do, had two picks against Alabama his freshman year, and he was a four-year starter. I mean, well, three-year starter, but played four years. So definitely – I know a lot of people get caught up in the stars, and I just want to say, like, just remember that Auburn does one of the best jobs in the whole SEC of developing players and getting guys that may have flown under the radar and being able to make more out of them through their development program, their weight program, and and, and, and especially on defense, the scheme that they put them in and allow them to be successful. So I think that uh, we're in really good shape, and uh, I'm just really, really, really excited about Kentucky. Uh, I think that Kentucky is going to be a lot tougher than a lot of people think, but I don't think that it's going to be the challenge that people are saying it is when it comes down to the score. Now, Auburn fans, we're we're, we're already looking past Kentucky. We're, we're looking at Georgia. We cannot afford to look past Kentucky. I think that if we focus and do what we have to do, the game will be in hand easily. I, I think that. But if we don't focus – then some of those prognosticators will be right when they're predicting us to be upset. And the scary part is that some of these guys don't even think it's an upset, which is crazy as hell to me. But, hey, you know, I I, I don't get paid to be on SEC Network yet. But uh, definitely some of those guys, I think they uh, may be getting a little too mellow at the mellow mushroom, if you know what I'm saying. So, But, no, nah, definitely uh, – I think uh, we have a really, really good shot of having an exceptional season. I think that the UGA game being so early actually plays in our favor. Uh, so just think, and, and and the reason I say that is we have a brand new offense coming in. So the install, let's say that we go in and we do what we have to do against uh, Kentucky. The second game, we won't have we wouldn't have shown our wrinkles yet. So we'll come out with our one offense against Kentucky. And then, you know, usually as the season goes on, we start to kind of incorporate wrinkles into the offense that may have not been seen earlier in the season. I think that getting Georgia the second game, such a high-caliber opponent opponent with that high-caliber defense that they have, I think that uh, being able to game plan and put those wrinkles in the following week could be very, very big in our favor. And I think that we'll do what we have to do against Georgia as well. Now, I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of game predictions, but I did want to get you guys some scoop for the week. 
Got a big time interview on the way, so uh, be tuned in to that. And uh, as always, man, everybody be safe, mask up, and uh, you know, mask up. So what they say, put put the mask on your face so we can play in the fall or however that goes. But you know what I'm saying. Wear your mask, be safe, take care of your family, and do what you got to do. All right, as always, Dukes the Scoop. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. You can listen to this podcast anywhere that you get your podcast at, except for Apple Music right now. But later in this week, we should be approved, but it's definitely on Spotify, Spreaker, uh, all those other places. So Google. So, but yeah, check me out on Spotify if you want to listen to it. And uh, if not, man, just play the YouTube in your car, ride to work. As always, we're eagle. Love y'all to death, man. Scoop out. Holla at you. Show.